Hello, boys and girls. Here I am with you for another exciting language arts lesson. I am Miss Coulson. I trust that you have had a great week. We have been having wonderful lessons while at home, and I know that you have been learning and using the skills we have already explored. Today, we will continue with our skills development activities. We will be looking at how we effectively use full stops and commas to write simple sentences. Yes, boys and girls, we are going to explore how you can write beautiful sentences that include commas and full stop for everyone to read and understand. At the end of the lesson, I want you to be able to say, I can write simple sentences. I can use the full stop at the end of my sentences. I can use the comma to separate items in a list. To get you to better use full stops and commas to write simple sentences, I will be telling you a story about two friends, a boy and a girl. The boy's name is Andrew and the girl's name is Kira. That's Andrew and Kira. Now listen up, boys and girls. Andrew and Kira are both seven years old. They are in the same grade one class and they both love to go to school. Their reasons for loving school were different, however. Andrew loved to be in class and learn everything his teacher taught him. But Kira, Kira loved to go to school because she got to play with Andrew and her other friends during break and lunch time. This is because she is an only child and has no other child at home to play with. One day, just like today, Andrew and Kira's teacher started their language arts lesson by reading to them a part of a story. The name of the story is, This is my house, this is my home. And it went like this. Please listen, boys and girls. It's time, it's time. It's time for story time. It's time, it's time, it's story time. It's time. So let us all be quiet and listen carefully. Shh. This is my house. This is my home. Now let's begin. This is my house. This is my home. My family lives in this house. We live together in this house. This house is our home. Come in. Come through the gate. Come up the path. This is the porch. My grandma likes to sit on the porch. Hi, Grandy. These are my friends. <laughs> my friends are going to see our home. This is our house. This is our home. Come inside. This is our living room. We sit on chairs. We sit and talk. We watch TV. We play games. This is our kitchen. We have a stove in the kitchen. We cook on the stove. The pots on the stove get hot. Watch out! We have a fridge in the kitchen. It is cold in the fridge. Food stays fresh in the cold fridge. Close the fridge door. Keep the hot air out. This is our house. This is our home. In our home, we sit together and eat. We eat at this table. We say thanks for the food. My mother is a good cook. My father is a good cook. We eat all our food. Yum! We wash our dirty plates. 
We wash our plates in the sink. Our kitchen is clean. This is our bathroom. We wash our hands in the basin. We take a shower in the bath. This is my bedroom. My bed is small. My sheets are blue. My sister's bed is small. Her sheets are yellow. I like my blue sheets. We have pictures on the wall. We have a mat on the floor. We have shelves for toys and books. We have a chest of drawers for our clothes. I like our room. Mommy and Daddy have a bedroom too. They have a big bed. They have a chest of drawers. They have a closet for their clothes. This is our house. This is our home. We have a yard around our house. We have a lawn of grass. We run across the lawn. We skip and jump. We kick our ball. But watch out. Do not kick the ball in the flower beds. Do not run in the vegetable beds. Mommy or daddy will send you to your bed. Now the story is over. Now the story is done. You can listen to it again and have more fun. Did you like that story? I'm sure you did. Just like Andrew and Kira did. After hearing that part of the story, this is my house, this is my home, their teacher asked to them, students, did you notice what was at the end of the sentences in the story? Did you notice a dot at the end of most of the sentences? All the boys and girls responded with a loud, yes, teacher. Yes, boys and girls, they all noticed that many of the sentences ended with a dot. Do you know what that dot is? Did you know that that dot is called a full stop? Did you know that when we write sentences that tell someone something, we should put a full stop at the end? Well, that is what the teacher discussed with the class. Both Andrew and Kira were fascinated with learning that they should always end sentences that tells someone something with a full stop. Let us now look at a few of the sentences from the story. Our first sentence is, we sit on chairs. Let's read that together, boys and girls. We sit on chairs. Do you see a full stop at the end? We have stopped while reading. Now we're going to read this sentence in a fun way. We are going to pretend as if we are driving. And when we come to the end of the sentence, we are going to step on our brakes so we come to a stop. Let's go. We sit on chairs. Do you hear that sound? That's our full stop. That signifies the end of our sentence. The full stop comes at the end of our sentence. Now, when we read, every time you see the full stop, as we go along, we're going to step on our brakes. What's the sound? X. Make it with me. X. Okay, good. This sentence tells us one thing. It gives us a complete thought. This is a simple sentence that ends with a full stop. Do you remember about the simple sentence? I know that your teacher did it with you in terms one and two. But let me remind you, a simple sentence has a subject and a predicate. The subject tells who or what the sentence is about. The predicate tells what the person or thing does. Okay, 
Let us now go back to the story of Andrew, Kira, and the lesson they were learning at school. Remember that Kira mostly liked going to school so she could play with her friends. But on this day, she was very interested in what was happening in class. She wanted to hear more about the little boy's home. When her teacher asked her if she could find any other sentence in the story with a full stop, Kira looked in her book and proudly said, Yes, teacher, I see the sentence that says, This house is our home. Andrew was happy that his friend was able to answer the question that teacher had asked. He smiled at her and she gave him a big toothy grin. The teacher also smiled and said, Good job, Kira. You are correct. Now, why was the teacher happy with Kira's answer, boys and girls? Why did she tell her she was correct? Well, the teacher said that because that is another sentence that has a full stop at the end. Let's read it together. This house is our home. Do you see the full stop at the end? I see the full stop. We end our sentences with a X. We end our sentences with a full stop. Let us now practice writing our own sentences. Aren't you excited about that, boys and girls? I sure am. I will be modeling for you five steps to take us to writing really good sentences. Step one, think about what you want to write. Step two, say it out loud. Step three, Count the number of words that you will write in your sentence. Step four, write your sentence down. And step five, read your sentence. Now we read as we write. So you write and you read. So steps four and five, we will do together. Let us now look at a sentence. I am thinking about a bag I have. I want to tell someone that I have a bag. So, I'm going to write on my page, I have a bag. I have a bag. Good. Now, how many words are in the sentence? I have a bag. I, one word, have, two words, a, three, bag, four. So it's, I have a bag, four words. I have a bag, four words. Now, boys and girls, we have identified that there are four words in our sentence. Now we will write. The first word we will write is the word I. Look at the word I. Do you notice something about that word? The word I is a capital letter. We use a capital letter at the beginning of our sentences. But there is something special about this word. Wherever you see the word I, anywhere in a sentence, it will be written as a capital letter. So now we have our first word, I. We will now write our second word for our sentence. Remember, our sentence reads, I have a bag. I have a bag. Four words. We have already written one word and now we will write our second word. The second word in our sentence is have. I will now write the word have. Do you see that word? Good. So now we have two words written down. Our third word in our sentence is a. Ah. Do you know how to write the word a? Ah? Let's look at the word a. Ah. Do you see 
what is written as a? It's the letter A. So now we have three of our four words. Let's read it. I have a. Good job. Now for our final word. What's our final word, boys and girls? Remember the sentence. I have a bag. I have a bag. So our final word is bag. Do you now see our sentence? Remember, we thought about it. Then we said it out loud. Then we counted the number of words. There were four words to be written down. And then we wrote our four words and read them as we went along. Let's read our sentence. I have a bag. I have a bag. But there is something missing from our sentence. Do you know what it is, boys and girls? Do you know what's missing from our sentence? If you guessed full stop, X, then you are correct. What's that sound? X for our full stop. Let's put our full stop in. Now our sentence is complete. Let's read our complete sentence. I have a bag. I have a bag. Do you have a bag? I have a bag. Do you? Let's read it together one more time. I have a bag. Remember, we put a full stop at the end of our sentences. Now, if you were following with me, reading and writing, I want you to give yourselves a hand. Clap yourselves, boys and girls. You have done well. Now, boys and girls, remember that at the start of the lesson, we said we would learn to write sentences with full stop and comma. We just wrote a beautiful sentence using our five steps. Now, we're going to look at the use of comma in sentences. What is a comma? Do you know? If you don't, come along with me as we learn what a comma is and how we can use commas in sentences. If you already know what a comma is, still come along on this journey as we explore the use of commas in sentences. Now I invite you to listen to a part of our story titled Coloring My School. It's time, it's time, it's time for story time. It's time, it's time, it's story time. It's time. So let us all be quiet and listen carefully. The name of this story is Coloring My School. Now let's begin. I am a little girl. My name is Sue. I go to a red school on Mango Avenue. Before we go any further, boys and girls, look carefully and see that at the end of each of these sentences, there is a full stop. In the same way, I want you to look out for commas as we continue to read. The big blue windows are open wide. Let's take a look. I'll show you inside. There are long yellow bookshelves, nice and neat. Filled with stories, what a lovely treat. You have listened to a part of the story. Let's look at the sentence. The big blue windows are wide open. Look at the word big, look at the word blue. Do you see something between those two words? Is there anything you see there that we should talk about? Yes, 
most boys and girls, we have what looks like a little swish between those two words. We have a little swish. Make that in the air with me. Swish. Now that is a comma. The comma is used when we list items in a sentence. The comma is used when we list items in a sentence. Listen to some more of the story. There are brown desks where we sit every day to read and write and draw and listen and learn and play. There is a black chalkboard and lots of lessons too. Some are easy, some are hard, and some are fun to do. Over here, we have two orange fish who love to swim round and round. They splash and splash, but they don't make a sound. Outside, we have a playground with a pink slide and purple swings. My friend James and I love it when break time begins. There are lots of green plants all lined up in a row. We take care of them and watch them as they grow. Last but not least, I've saved the best part. Look at the white walls filled with our colourful art. There are pictures of places we've seen and people we know. There are pictures of people we learn about and places we want to go. I think it looks great. Everyone say so. Miss Jones, Mummy, Daddy and Granny too. Do you like it? Yes or no? Do you hear that? It's the bell! That means that school is done. You must come again. I hope that you had fun. Now the story is over. Now the story is done. You can listen to it again and have more fun. Now, boys and girls, remember that at the start of the lesson, we said we would learn to write sentences with full stops and the comma. We just wrote a beautiful sentence and included our full stop. We followed our five steps. Let us now look at the use of the comma in sentences. What is a comma? Do you know? Well, if you don't, come along with me on this journey to learn what the comma is and how we use commas in a sentence. If you already know, still come along on the journey as we explore the use of commas in sentences. Listen to this sentence. My bag has the colors green, orange, and black. Look at the sentence on your screen. My bag has the colors green, orange, and black. Now, if you look at that sentence, you're going to notice something. What are we talking about? My bag. What about the bag? It has some colors. What are the colors? Let's say the colors on our bag. Green orange, black. How many colors? Green, orange, black. There are three colors on our bag. So let's read that sentence again. My bag has the colors green, orange, and black. What did we do when we spoke about the colors? What did we write? Look at the sentence. We wrote down all three colors. There are three colors. 
In the sentence, we have listed the colors. We have written all three colors down that tell us what my bag looks like. When we write, we need to put a comma between items we list. What are the words we listed in our sentence? Remind me, green, orange, black. The sentence reads, my bag has the colors green, orange, and black. So we have listed three colors. Remember, we put commas between the items we list. Now I want you to look at the sentence. Notice that there is no comma before the last thing listed. But there is a comma between the words green and orange. We put a comma between the words we list, but for the last thing we're listing, we use the word and. Let's read the sentence again. My bag has the colors green, orange, and black. Notice the comma after the word green. Notice the swish. Notice the swish. Now that swish is our comma. So we have a comma between the words green and orange. And what is between the words orange and black? The word and. We use and before the last thing to be listed. Let's look at another sentence. Look at your screen, boys and girls. Let's read the sentence together. My mother likes to cook, to sing, to bake cakes, to ride a bicycle, and to eat apples. Five things. Let's read it together again. But this time, we're going to take note of our commas in the sentence. So let's go. My mother likes to cook swish. Do you see that comma there? To sing, swish. To bake cakes, swish. To ride a bicycle, and to eat apples. Mother likes to do many things. Does your mother like to do any of these things? Notice that in our sentence, even though there are five things listed, we only have three commas. Why is that so? Do you know? Yes! We only have three commas because we use and between the last two things to be listed. Look at our sentence again. Notice that we have a comma between to cook and to sing. Another one between to sing and to bake. And another between to bake cakes and to ride a bicycle. So now you see we use our commas when listing, but we use the word and between the last two items. The commas are written between the things being listed, but there is no comma between the last two things listed. We use and between them. Did you notice that, boys and girls? If you did, pat yourselves on the shoulder and say, Good job. Go ahead. Good job. Now, I want to ask you to do a favor for me. Get your books and your pencil. We are going to write our own sentences. Are you ready? Are you ready, boys and girls? Great. Let's go, go, go. Let's write, boys and girls. You will add full stop and commas to sentences. Now, sentence one is about something my cat likes to eat. Write a sentence in your book that tells one thing, one thing 
your cat likes to eat. If you don't have a cat and you have another pet, write what your pet likes to eat. I have a cat, so I'm writing what my cat likes to eat. I have a very greedy cat. All right, so you have written your sentence. Look at my sentence. My sentence reads, my cat likes to eat chocolate. My cat likes to eat chocolate. What a funny cat, isn't he? But what's missing from our sentence? My sentence is not complete. We need to come to a stop. We need to touch on the brake. Ax! What goes at the end of the sentence? The full stop. Yes. Remember, put your full stops in. Now, I want us to add to this sentence. We have written about the cat or any other pet. What he or she likes to eat. My cat likes to eat chocolate. Now I want you to think of three more things your cat likes to eat. So in our sentence, we're going to have four things that cats like to eat. Go ahead and write your sentence. Just a reminder, remember commas are placed between items we list except the last two where we put the word and. I'm waiting. Okay. I believe you have now written your beautiful sentence. I will share with you my sentence telling you what my cat likes to eat. Read with me. My cat likes to eat chocolate, mashed potato, rice, and chicken. My cat likes to eat chocolate, mashed potato, rice, and chicken. Do you see my sentence? Have you noticed that something is missing from my sentence? I know that something is missing. What's missing? If you said commas and a full stop, you were correct. We need to put swishes and irks to our sentence. So let's fix it. My cat likes to eat chocolate, mashed potato, rice, and chicken. Where would we put our first swish? Where would we put our first comma? That's right, boys and girls, just after the word chocolate. Why are we doing this? Because we are listing. We are listing the things my cat likes to eat. Do we need to put a comma anywhere else in the sentence? Let's look at it again. So we have, my cat likes to eat chocolate, swish, mashed potato, rice, and chicken. Do we need another comma? Yes, we do. We need a comma after potato. We need a comma after mashed potato. So our sentence would read, my cat likes to eat chocolate, swish, mashed potato, swish, rice, and chicken. That's our sentence with commas. But did we put a X? Did we draw our break? Did we put a full stop? We need to put our full stop. Our full stop will come at the end of the sentence. So now you see the complete sentence. My cat likes to eat chocolate, mashed potato, rice, and chicken. How many commas did we include? Did you use two in your sentence? Did you place a full stop at the end? If you did, give me a high five. Job well done. 
If you didn't, go ahead and do it now. Put your commas and your full stop in your sentence. Then give me a high five. Job well done. Now I have a special sentence for you. Look at this sentence. I like to read and watch television. Look at the sentence. I like to read and watch television. How many things do I like to do? Tell me. Did you say two? Okay, let's check. I like to read and watch television. How many things did I say I like to do? Two. Read and watch television. Do we need a comma in this sentence? No, we don't. We have only listed two things. So therefore, we use our comma when we list more than two things in a sentence. This sentence, only two, so we separate them with and. If we had more than two, we would need a comma. But for this sentence, no commas are needed. Good job, boys and girls. Now, like we did last week, I have a challenge for you. Your challenge is to write five sentences that have both commas and a full stop. Ensure that they are used correctly by checking with a parent or sibling. Share your sentences with your family. Now that we're at the end of the lesson, I know you are saying to someone close to you, I can write simple sentences that have commas and full stop. Boys and girls, you have done a great job with writing sentences. Continue to practice all the skills you have learned so far. See you next class.